What is up guys, it's your Captain Speaking Alex, and in today's video, I will be explaining the entire story of Unturned. This is only the first part if you want me to release the second part, which includes the Hawaii map and the New Germany map. Comment that down below. So guys, after hours of searching every map, near and far, looking for all the notes, looking for all the clues, I have come up with my own personal story of what I think happened in the Unturned world. Take note that I could be completely wrong, or I could be completely right. Without further ado, let's just get straight into my theory of Unturned. So our story starts on July of 1947, when the U.S. military shoots down two scout UFOs of the Polysol Federation. One of these UFOs lands in New Mexico, and the other one is deemed lost. The UFO that was deemed lost can actually be found on the Washington map in the golf course. There you can find a bunch of Scorpion 7 members looking, excavating the site. Also, you find a resource report near the crashed UFO dating July 3rd, 1947, explaining why the aliens were here to begin with. Also, you can find a Shadow Stalker, which, I assume, is alien technology that is later acquired by Scorpion 7. Upon finding out, Area 51 decides to send some of their military up north to form Olympia military base explaining why the U.S. military has a desert camo, because they're from New Mexico, which is a desert in Area 51, and not a forest camo to match the Washington bio, since every other military on every other map has a camo matching their environment, except for the American military. Sometime in Olympia's history, General Harkin, on May 21st, sent a message to Area 51 asking to transfer over any copies regarding the Polysol Federation, which we can only assume is the UFO that crashed in Washington and New Mexico. In Washington, you can find a destroyed convoy going to Olympia military base responding to their message from General Harkin. The message is encrypted using AES, which you can find AES key to decipher. Upon deciphering the note, you can find out Area 51 had interrogated the aliens on July 8, 1947, which was around the same time the UFO had crashed. What they found out was that the Polysol Federation simply observes the universe avoiding interference with less developed civilizations, and that they consider humanity an ally because we had saved one of their scout ships. But clearly we can see that the Area 51 crew sent to Olympia never made it concluding that the zombie outbreak probably happened before May 23rd. A note at Scorpion 7, most likely written by a scientist there who later turned into a zombie, reads, He's so sorry, our past bioweapon contracts were never used, so I didn't think twice about this one. My theory is that some sort of bioweapon was also found at the site of the alien crash and were tested on humans. This bioweapon probably turned them into zombies, as bioweapons are normally germ slash chemical warfare. Scorpion 7 kept these zombies in cryo chambers and did numerous experiments on them, but eventually made a mistake with that note written by that one scientist who probably caused it. One of the zombies had escaped and infected the entire Scorpion 7. The US military soon finds out and sends Bravo team in this mission statement to neutralize the contamination. Obviously, they had failed, as you can see destroyed U.S. military vehicles and the zombie apocalypse. After this contamination leak, Scorpion 7 moves to PEI, also known as Prince Edward Island in Canada, leaving Washington to become infected and fought off by the U.S. military. Soon, the coalition in its early stages sprouts up in Washington, as promoted by the evacuation zones and their headquarters in Heritage Valley. While the coalition in Washington fights off the zombie apocalypse, Canada and its military is fighting off the zombie apocalypse as well, soon realizing that Scorpion 7 is the cause of the zombie virus. So the Canadian military soon kick out all of Scorpion 7 and its employees out of Prince Edward Island to the far north of Canada, to Yukon. But Scorpion 7 decides to cover up their traces, as you can't find Scorpion 7's facility on PEI. But in a dead zone on a family farm, you can find a destroyed sign buried in the middle of a field, implying that the Scorpion 7 once was there. 
and the farm is merely just a cover up. This is also supported by the fact that the people living on the farm have no memory of Scorpion 7, almost as if those memories were replaced, as evidence suggests that in the diary they don't remember writing those things, and they're acting like the memories don't even fit where they belong. Not only that, but in Washington, Jane, a friend of Laura, biked down to the farm and even saw people in biohazard suits telling them the road was off limits, digging a hole for destroying the evidence that once was there that Scorpion 7 actually existed. Now, Scorpion 7 is located in Yukon, continuing their experiments on the zombies. This is supported by an eviction notice on Dr. Bahan's door in PEI that he had 30 days to leave or he would face jail time. But the same doctor is seen working in a facility in Scorpion 7 on the Yukon map. Dr. Bahan explains on the February 7th how his move was unavoidable for obvious reasons and that the Big J executives are even part of this project, sponsoring the work going on at Scorpion 7, working on something of their own that is undisclosed in this information. Whatever is going on here, Big J, for some reason, is sponsoring the work of testing with the zombies as seen in the biodomes on the Yukon Scorpion 7 facility. A reporter eating at Big J's fast food in Washington describes how the food has been better tasting and more addicting recently. Same for the wild berries growing around the place. You can also find wild berries growing in the biodomes of the Yukon Scorpion 7 facility. He also explains how they've been adding chemicals to the animals to make the food taste better. And who else works with chemicals? Scorpion 7. Big J and Scorpion 7 are working together with zombie testing to make Big J's fast food even bigger. While all of this is going down, PEI is soon to be found at a point where the zombie apocalypse has reached the bridge. Right before the Canadian government started to go dark, they sent a mission briefing over to the military at PEI to destroy the bridge to save the island. Obviously, it had failed, as the zombie apocalypse still managed to spread into Prince Edward Island. After PEI had gone dark, soon did Yukon. Yukon and the Scorpion 7 base had soon been overrun with the zombies, and evidence by crashed boats and helicopters spewing chemical waste. Now the coalition stronger than ever in Washington sent AC-130 to Yukon to see how many survivors they could save. AC-130s dropped supply crates around the map for players, dropping extra guns and ammo. They are the coalition and they supply survivors with needed necessity. But in Yukon, one of those planes had crashed on its way to the airport obviously resulting in no coalition ever to be set up in Yukon. The International and PEI soon fell to the zombie virus. You can spot an orange airliner docked near an air hangar and a purple airliner crashed on the runway. But the International Airport has three hangars, but only here you can spot two planes. That third plane actually flew all the way to Russia. An air traffic control log on May 22nd describes how Flight 106 isn't responding. Upon further inspection, the passengers on the plane seem to be carrying a fast-acting virus, which we know as the zombie virus. This proves that the virus spreads a lot faster than we think. On May 22nd is the day before the Area 51 crew in Washington had been infected, and the day after General Harkin sent his message. This only proves that the virus started around this time, maybe a little bit earlier. According to General Roman's diary, Russia had been fighting off the zombie virus for quite some time, and actually joins the coalition after North Moscow is completely taken over. This is the same coalition that was started in Washington. So the coalition in Russia decides to set up three locations, the oil rig Volk military base in an area near Silo 22. This can all be proven since General Roman's diary is found on the oil rig, same as survivor tents and helicopter pads 
and everything needed in the survival base. As well as the underground bunker near Silo 22, the Coalition used in its early stages, as you can't find any official uniforms there, but people in bandanas and balclavas that have probably joined the militia. Not only that, but at Volk Military Base, you can find an AC-130, which is a Coalition plane. The same plane that drops hair packages, as well as the same plane we see crashed on the Yukon map. General Roman describes how the zombie virus has taken over North Moscow, but eventually takes over all of Moscow. This message is sent over to General Boris, who is in charge of Silo 22, who decides he doesn't want to nuke Moscow because it's not what he signed up for. Afraid to be overrun for not listening to his orders, he decides to sabotage the missile, making it go off in Silo 22, causing a wasteland all around it. This also kills off the Coalition base right next to it. In Artyom's note, you can see that they describe the Russian military fighting off some sort of disease, and try to fight it off on their own. You can see the secret bookshelf even opened, revealing weapons and ammunition. This obviously fails as the Russian Mafia residence is slowly turned to the zombies. Just like whoever else has a diary, Natasha writes how Big J is trying to buy out her gas station, but she won't give in since it's a family business. This proves that Big J fast food and ecofuel wants to do something in Russia, but just can't seem to get a location. Whatever they want to do is probably work with Scorpion 7. But yet again, we don't see a Scorpion 7 in the Russia map. Even though we don't see a Scorpion 7, their presence is really strong in the Russia map. At the Kriev dig site, Dima has a note here explaining how she found a random artifact that she finds is junk. But some sort of buyer wanted to buy this for more than it's worth. The buyer who had it had a license plate that reads Scorpion 7B. The artifact most likely sold to Scorpion 7 was the Soul Crystal, which was first mentioned in Kilroy's journal. He talks about his findings about the artifact and how it relates to the ancient tribes here, and the story behind it. Also in his journal, he gives very easy hints on how to find it yourself. As a worker describes in the subway, he feels like something is following him as the lights go out, most likely the spirit guarding the Soul Crystal. First, finding the symbol in the subway and typing the spirit guardian's name in the area chat will activate the door to open. Not only that, but you must place a horde beacon to charge the soul crystal. As described, fragments of it were buried all around the map, and this was probably one of them found while digging out the subway tunnel. After killing 20 zombies to charge the crystal, you'll be specially teleported to a secret, I assume, Scorpion 7 laboratory. Meaning there is a Scorpion 7 lab on the map, but probably somewhere not being able to be found. In here you can find two notes and a big soul crystal, which is the same one that they were testing on according to the notes left behind. This hijack log explains how they were trying to make a vaccine but it seemed to have no effect. If anything, it only made them worse, growing acid glands, generating electricity, and even other zombies taking on fireproof properties. This explains the sudden outbreak of weird mutated zombies. In this log, they try to describe their efforts in destroying the soul crystal, and how everything they have done has been ineffective. No radiation, electricity, or explosives could break the soul crystal. This makes this soul crystal seem a little bit more alien to me. I have a theory that this is the resources that the aliens, the Polysoul Federation, were starting to guard. Not just our trees and waters, but the soul crystals in our ancient artifacts buried beneath the Earth's surface. The sight of the soul crystal placing your cursed pirate treasure, your cursed skull, and cursed bones teleport you to a secret boss fight where you fight a giantly mutated zombie who was probably created by the lab in Scorpion 7 after the failed vaccine testing. Not only that, but after killing it, you'll get tiny soul crystal fragments which were probably the ones that were buried by the tribe. 
After placing each soul crystal in its original location and charging it up with a horde beacon, you can activate the three radio towers found on the Russia map, pointing them all with laser beams to a center location where you'll find the Shadow Stalker Mark II, which also is alien technology, only giving these soul crystals and aliens more connection. In Scorpion 7, studying these, also more connection. Russian military continue to fight off the zombie virus, but eventually get overrun. Right before getting overrun, the Russian military go down to pick up an old World War II train named Ivan. They use this train to start blowing up all the tunnels. According to the radio log at Volk military base, they had lost connection with the rail cannon crew who were in charge of blowing up all the tunnels. They assumed though that their mission was complete. Obviously, this is not true since the virus still spread it, turning the coalition base at Volk military base into zombies. The only coalition left are the ones on the oil rig, and according to General Roman's diary, they call in reinforcements, but by the time those reinforcements show up, everybody's dead. These reinforcements are the Liberator, who managed to save a few people, but don't manage to get there in time. The Liberator even sends you on a quest to find out what happened on the oil rig. Upon inspection on the oil rig, you can find the crashed submarine underneath it, where one of them had a nuclear meltdown. This makes sense since General Roman describes having nuclear submarines in the area, and the area is a dead zone, implying that there was nuclear waste, which came from the submarine that had crashed. When we see the Coalition now, on the Liberator, it is more advanced than ever before, having its own rank system and having laws like in society. We can tell that Washington probably fell long before this as they have not set up the new coalition. They were there only in the early stages because they didn't have the new rank system or the new flag, only evacuation zones and a militia. Also, the coalition flag looks very similar to the UN flag, who has a goal of uniting nations. Also, the goal is to create peace and bring everyone together, almost like the Coalition is to try to reclaim their homeland from the zombies, but trying to bring everyone together. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is what I think happened based on hours of research and clues all around the map. Take note I could be very wrong here, but this is just my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys agreed or disagreed, leave it down in the comments below. According to my theory, the only people who are left are the Coalition and survivors like yourself. But this does leave me with a few questions. Why when you die, you don't turn into a zombie? Obviously, everybody else did. That's just one of my biggest questions while researching this. Not only that, if the aliens were here to protect the Earth, why didn't they save them during this massive outbreak? Anyways, I don't know what's really going on here, and if you want me to add in the Hawaii and Germany map, I could do so in a later video. Except the Hawaii map is not an official map, it's a curated map, and has its own story that's almost a little bit unrelated to the main story. It's like a little side story. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Alex from the Bros Films channel, signing out.